Psalm uh, 34, the verse 19, and I'm only going to take, you, uh, take a few more uh, minutes, and it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Now, you've heard the testimony tonight of a girl whose afflictions have been many, and yet she is able to stand up here and look beyond her present circumstances because of an inner joy and peace that God has planted deep within her soul. Holly knows that short years on this planet are not all that there is. She is able to look beyond her present affliction to a land where she will never uh, grow old, a paradise where God and his people dwell and where we will live as long as God lives. The Bible says the things that are, that are seen are only temporary, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. But you know, Holly will not receive this eternal life someday in the future when she dies or when the Lord returns. No, you see, this girl already has eternal life today. This girl that stood up here a few moments ago is never going to die. She will never, ever cease to exist. How can I say that? Because Holly's Savior says in his word, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never, never die. You see, the Lord is going to deliver this girl. It says so right here in his word tonight. You see, this girl is a king's daughter and a child of God. And she's going to be delivered from every affliction because that's what God's word says. You know, our way for Holly would have been no cancer, no chemo, no sickness, and no operation. But you see, our way would have meant that you wouldn't have been here tonight and you'd never have heard of Holly Parsons. Our way would have meant that God wouldn't have spoken to you through his child tonight. And I have no doubt in my mind, many people, have been touched and spoken to this evening. You see, that's how God reaches and rescues sinners, through his word proclaimed by the servants of God. The Lord delivereth the righteous from every affliction, and only God can deliver the sinner from sin and from hell. You know, your religion can't deliver you, and I don't care, and it doesn't matter what religion you've been born in tonight with whether Catholic, whether Protestant, it does not matter. Your pastor, your priest, your minister can't deliver you. Your good works can't deliver you. Your baptism, your confirmation, or any other sacrament can't deliver you. But the Lord can, and the Lord will. Because Jesus says, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. The Lord will deliver Holly from her affliction, and he will do it in his way and in his time. The verse here, it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And it reminds us all tonight that many are the sins of the ungodly. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. You're a sinner, the Bible says it, and that settles it. Book of Ecclesiastes says, there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Paul to the Romans, he wrote, there is none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The good news, whoever is this, the Lord can deliver you out of all of your sins. Not a few, not some, but them all, every single one of them. Because the precious blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all your sin. All of your sin. The book of Joel says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. You see, Christ died for you. Christ was raised from the dead. Christ ascended into heaven. And Christ is alive tonight. And praise God, he is only a call away. That's all. Anyone tonight can call upon his name. But what happens if you don't call? What happens if you just re continue to reject him and stay in your sin? Well, Holly's already quoted it. The wages or the consequences of your sin is death, hell, the lake of fire. But again, Holly said, praise God, that verse does not end there. Because even though the wages or the consequences of your sin is death, the gift of God, and that's what it is tonight, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. 
If you call on the Lord tonight, repenting of your sin and trusting in Christ alone for your salvation, you will receive the free gift of God, which is eternal life. And that's what the dying thief did on the cross. Remember him? He was kneeled to a cross next to the Lord Jesus. And he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the Lord looked over to him and he said, today, today you'll be with me in paradise. And you too can have eternal life today. Can you imagine how encouraging that would be for Holly as she makes her way to the hospital tomorrow, knowing that the night before here in the lifeboat, someone else's name was written into the Lamb's Book of Life as a result of this meeting? You see, I know this girl, and I know that she would gladly have endured all of her afflictions just to see a soul saved from hell in this meeting. And she would ensure that her God would get all the glory. You say, well, me and God have our own thing going on and I'll be all right in the end and I've got my own way sorted out to heaven. Well, of course you've got your own way sorted out because everyone has their own way. The problem is your way is the broad way and it leads to destruction. In fact, you could be in hell tonight. That's the reality. Bertie already mentioned Uh, The Stafford family. What a tragedy. Christopher's only 39. Sudden death. The reality is any one of us could be an eternity night. You see, this, this, this book is a wonderful book. It's a beautiful book. It's God's inspired, infallible word. It promises many wonderful things. One thing it will not promise anyone in this meeting, and that's a tomorrow. No one is guaranteed another day. Verse 4 here, it says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. Unless you seek him, he can't deliver you from your sin and from sin's consequences. Verse 6, it says, This poor man cried, the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. So unless you cry to him, he can't save you from all your troubles, whatever those troubles may be. And we've all got troubles. Verse 10, they they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. You see, the Lord promises every repentant sinner an abundant eternal life. You couldn't possibly want anything more than that. Verse 14, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And that's what we must all do tonight. If you're still in your sin, you must depart from evil. In other words, repent of your sin. Seek the peace of God while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. But you say, well, I've already said a sinner's prayer. Well, that may be so, but have you repented of your sins? Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You see, we're not saved by repeating or reading someone else's words, even if they're written on the back of a tract. But we are saved when we repent of our own sins. Verse 22, it says, The Lord redeemeth or purchases the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. What hope, what peace, what assurance we have tonight. We can't lose. The Christian simply cannot lose because to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if you die without him, then you lose everything. And it's forever too late. God's elect, God's blood-bought people, they walk the narrow way which leads to life. But as you've heard tonight, sometimes that narrow way is lined with thorns and briars. The narrow road sometimes is a rocky road. And afflictions can come at us just like midges in the Scottish Highlands. But the same God that allows these afflictions will also call them in and rein them in when his divine will and purpose is accomplished. You see, there is an end to the believer's affliction. It is a joyful end in a land of no more tears or sorrow or crying or pain or death. But friends, there is no joyful end to the afflictions of the unbeliever because in hell your afflictions just continue to multiply. Holly is experiencing a temporary affliction. 
But imagine facing this without God by your side and without being saved. And some of you are doing that tonight. And it is madness. Madness. When you could have a friend next to you, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The one who can put away all afflictions is the one who can put away all your iniquities. And though your sins may be many, his mercy is more. The psalmist said in 62 verse 8, Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I wonder, is he your refuge tonight? You know, Holly has been through an awful lot recently. I think she, she said or quoted the word horrific at least on two occasions. And I'm sure it has been horrific. And I'm sure it has reminded her of what Christ suffered for her and indeed for you. Because the Bible says he gave himself a ransom for all. In fact, the hymn writer said his wounds have paid my ransom. Friends, to benefit from his final sacrifice and finish work on Calvary, you must come to him tonight. And don't delay. Our brother Stephen quoted this morning, 2 Corinthians 15, verse 2. This is what it says. If ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. Don't forsake him tonight. Jesus says, come to me. He doesn't chase you off to religion. He doesn't chase you off to a pastor or a minister. Jesus, the beautiful Savior of the world who died for you, he says, come to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that's the rest of salvation. And it's available to everyone in the meeting tonight.